Welcome to View from Scratch. In this series, we're going to be taking a look at the JavaScript framework Vue.js. Now, Vue.js has become an extremely popular JavaScript framework because of its ease of use. It is very approachable, and as you'll see, we'll be able to get started with the project very, very quickly. Now, if you are coming from the Laravel world, then of course, you know Vue.js as the front end that ships with Laravel. But if not, don't worry, we're going to be covering everything from scratch with Vue.js. So your go-to source for Vue.js, of course, is Vue.js.org. If you visit this website, then of course, you're going to get the documentation for Vue. And to do so, we're going to click the Get Started button. Now, there are a million ways that you can bring Vue.js into a project, but for the sake of simplicity, I am going to show you the very easy way to get started with a project and create your own playground where you can learn all about Vue. In a more advanced topic, we will start to cover NPM and having an NPM build. But for now, again, let's keep it very, very simple. So if you scroll down here a little bit, there are these two boxes right here. Now, Vue is provided to you through a CDN if you wanted to. Now, if you're not familiar with a CDN, all it is is just a hosted file in somebody's server. Now, the idea behind a CDN is quite good. Some of these libraries do get quite large. So if everybody was to use the same CDN, then there's a high probability that your users already have the library in their cache. But for us, we're not too concerned with that just yet. We really just want to pull in view. So this is what you need to have. If you have this inside of your project, then of course, view will be brought in. So let's get started from scratch. I'm going to jump over to my terminal and I'm going to make a new directory, make directory and let's call it view from scratch. All right, let's CD into view from scratch and let me open that up in PHP storm. Now I use PHP storm, but you don't have to worry if you don't have that. Obviously there are many different editors that you can use. VS code is actually a free one. And if you're looking for an editor, I would probably recommend that you get VS code. But with that being said, everything from there on out would be exactly the same. I obviously don't have any files in here, so let's create a new HTML file. And let's just call it index. Now inside this index.html file, let's just start with a title of view from scratch. So let's switch back to Chrome. And of course, we need to bring in the development version of view. Now the development version of view will actually have some additional warnings that you need and it will actually help you develop. So I recommend that you stick with this version as you're learning Vue.js. All right. So back here in my body, I'm just simply going to paste that script in. So now that we have that script in place, we need to actually create our view instance. And so this brings us to the very first concept of view. So you are going to basically wrap anything that you want Vue to know about inside a div or some sort of element with a particular ID. Now, all this means is that anything that's inside of here, Vue is going to know about. So let's go ahead and create a div. And the typical way is to have an ID of app. And that's all we need. All right. So let's go ahead and create our very first Vue app. So inside a script tag, we'll just say new Vue. And that is going to be a class that is provided because we are pulling in view inside of here. You're going to have an object. And the very first thing you need to do is tell it about this app. So that is called EL for element. And then inside of here, we just say pound app. And now view knows that this is where it needs to be. So like I said, view is data driven. So let's give it some data. Let's say data. And this is an object. And inside of our data object, let's have a title of my title. Okay. So we have this data. We are binding it into this app. So let's learn our very first way of outputting data. So let's create an H1. And if I wanted to output this text right here inside my H1, you could use curly bracket, curly bracket notation, and then just say title. Now the title here is referring to this key right here. So again, if I want to put my title inside of this H1, you would use this curly bracket, curly bracket, and then the key that belongs to your data. 
Okay, so let's try this out in the browser. Now, because this is just simple HTML and JavaScript, any browser can basically render this without any compilers or anything like that. So all we need to do is open up this index inside the browser. So let's go back to Chrome, and then let's just hit File, Open, File, and in this window, browse to the correct file, and just open it up. And there we go. And so, of course, the first thing we see is that title is actually not being rendered. And this is actually quite a common thing. And what it is is that we are used to putting our scripts down underneath. But what happens is when we get to here, well, this script hasn't quite loaded. So this script actually needs to be at least above our actual view instance. That way, it actually knows what view is. So let's hit save. Let's go back to Chrome, hit refresh. And sure enough, now we are working. We have our H1 and it has my title inside. Of course, if I change this to my title again, hit save, hit refresh, there it is. So we are passing data from our view data object into one of the elements in our HTML. Let's go ahead and do another one and see what else we could do. How about this? What if we had a P tag and I wanted to have some text inside of it. All right, let's create some text for our P tag. And let's just simply call it maybe content. And let's say here is my text. All right, so how do we apply content inside of our P tag? Of course, we could use our curly brackets and say content, and this would work. There we go. But I do want to show you a different way to actually output this out and it is v dash text. Now this is the first time that we've encountered one of the v directives, but Vue has a lot of these v dash directives, and one of them is text. So inside text, we can say content, and this would actually output the exact same result. Now one advantage to doing it this way is the fact that you don't have to use these curly brackets and some may argue that this looks a little cleaner. In this particular case, it really does not matter at all. You can do it in either way. All right, so what if I need to output a data inside an attribute? Let's say an H1 had a title attribute, and if you're not familiar with the title attribute, all it does is it gives you a little contextual menu. Let's just type in test here, and let me show you what it actually does. Let me hit refresh. And if you hover over that for just a couple of seconds, then you see down there, you do get this contextual menu. So that's pretty cool. But what if I wanted to actually put some view data inside of here? Well, you can't use curly brackets, right? That wouldn't work. If we did that, hit refresh. When we hover over it, of course, that doesn't work. So how do we actually do that? Well, it is quite simple. We're just going to call this menu. It's going to be a new data that doesn't exist yet. And what we need to do is say v dash bind and then colon. So this will bind title to the data menu. Okay, let's explore that. Let's add that now. Menu, my menu data here. This is refresh. And now if we come back here, hover over it for a few seconds, then of course we do get our contextual menu. How cool is that? So that's the way that you would be able to bind data into menu. Now at first glance, this may not seem like we are doing much, but as a matter of fact, when you actually bind something like this, it is bounded both ways, which means that if we actually change the text inside of our data, then it would actually change back here. Now, this is not typically how JavaScript works. If you're familiar with jQuery, of course, you would have to hunt down your element, change its value whenever the value of it actually changed. But that's not the case with Vue. So in the next episode, we're going to explore a way for us to actually be able to change that value inside this data and see it change outside of this data. So stay tuned.